Okay, so my name is Moaz and uh, I'll be uh, going over uh, some, some of the tips and tricks that you may need if you're trying to run your, uh, trying to port your codes to the GPU nodes in particular. And before I begin, I would like to thank Steve and Helen for, for their contribution to these uh, slides and the materials. So uh, I think most of the things that you need to get started on Perlmutter have been covered by Eric very nicely. And uh, this, the, uh, this presentation is mostly uh, describing the particulars of the GPU nodes. Uh, for example, the programming environment and uh, the architecture of the nodes. And later we have uh, a few hands-on exercises, but before you get to them uh, yourself, I'll, I'll do a walkthrough of those uh, through, uh, using the, uh, the time that I have for this presentation. And I'll try to convey some of the concepts that we are trying to explain through those hands-on exercises. <laughs> So uh, as was described by Jack in the morning, the, the GPU nodes on Perlmutter, uh, we have about 1,792 GPU nodes on Perlmutter and all of them have same architecture except a small change. Uh, out of these 1,792 nodes, 1,536 nodes have uh, A100 GPUs, uh, the, their 40 GB variant, which is that the size of the HPM is 40 GBs on each GPU. Uh, while 256 of these nodes have the 80 GB variant. Uh, so uh, each of these GPU nodes also contains a, a host processor, a CPU, which is the AMD Milan CPU. Uh, it contains 64 cores. And as was described by Eric, uh, these are the hardware cores and each core contains uh, two logical CPUs or uh, hyperthreads. So you have a total of 128 uh, logical CPUs on the Perlmutter GPU nodes. And each GPU node contains four NVIDIA A100 GPUs. The, the slight difference between the GPUs as described above is that 256 nodes will have the GPUs with 80 GB HPM each. So all the GPUs uh, on a GPU node are connected via NVLink connections. So it's, a, it's like an all-to-all -all connection. Uh, and the CPUs and the GPUs can communicate via the PCI Gen 4 bus. Uh, each node also contains four Slingshot 11 NICs as described over here. And uh, these are connected to the CPUs uh, via a PCI uh, Gen 4 connection as well. Uh, I think this was also a question uh, in, the, in the first presentation. Uh, what is the 256 GB DDR4? So this is the RAM that you have on, on the nodes. And this is separate from the, the GPU's memory. So each GPU has 40 GBs or 80 GBs of memory. Uh, that is the uh, high bandwidth memory that's available on the GPU that you can utilize. And then on the host side, we have 256 GBs of uh, DDR4 memory available as well. Uh, with this, let's move on to the, the programming environment. Uh, so when you log into Perlmutter, everything is by default set for GPU nodes. So you won't need to make any change. And you can check that by listing the modules that you have loaded. You'll see that a module GPU is loaded. And what this module does is it, it makes sure that uh, all the in required environment variables and the compiler wrappers are set up for GPU builds. Uh, you'll also notice that you have uh, a, the CUDA toolkit module and the Crepe Excel NVIDIA AT module loaded. So these are things that are required if you want to use the GPU specific features of the, of the node. Uh, the default programming environment is GNU. So if you log into Perlmutter and do a module list, this is uh, what you will see. You'll see that uh, the GPU module and the GPU specific uh, uh, modules are loaded along with the uh, GNU programming environment. But if you want to use the NVIDIA programming environment, you will have to change to that. By default, uh, it's, it would be GNU. Uh, and let's talk a bit about the, the compiler wrappers. So the compiler wrappers are, are something of, uh, you know, it, it makes things really easy for you. Let's say that you want to build a code using the uh, GNU compilers and you want you would want to use the G++ compiler if you're building a C++ code. Uh, but when you're building a GPU code, there are a lot of libraries that you want to link and, uh, and they could be all over the place. And we do not want you to go through the process of, you know, finding the path of each of those and making sure that it is being linked in. Uh, what you want to do is you want to use the compiler wrappers. So regardless of the type of programming environment that is loaded, 
uh, your compiler wrapper will make the call to the to the right uh, uh, compiler and link all the required libraries. For example, if we have the GNU programming environment loaded, we are basically trying to work with the the GNU compilers. And if you use the capital CC compiler wrapper, that's uh, used for the C++ applications. And you will see that underneath it, it's basically uh, using the G++ compiler. And if you use the small CC wrapper, it would be GCC compiler underneath. Now, let's say that you want to use the NVIDIA compilers. So you swap or you change the, the programming environment to NVIDIA by doing module load programming environment NVIDIA. And then you can check the version of the compiler by using the compiler wrapper. And you would see that the NVC++ and the NVC compiler are now being used. So the compiler wrappers really make things easy for you, especially when you are, uh, you're working on GPU nodes because with the GPU, you have to link in the, the, the different run times there. So this is uh, a, an image from our documentation and a, a kind of a similar image was shown by Jack in the morning. This is the uh, uh, all the programming models that we have available and the programming environments that make them available. For example, NVIDIA, uh, uh, if you do use the programming environment in NVIDIA, you will be able to uh, build your programs in CUDA, OpenACC, OpenMT, uh, Cocos, and Raja as well. Uh, while there is another experimental programming environment that is the NERSC programming environment or the LLVM, uh, uh, also in, in, the, in the pipes, uh, I think you will have access to it soon. The experimental version can still be accessed. Uh, you can check our documentations for that. But this provides, I think, the, uh, the widest uh, coverage. It even provides coverage for the HIP and the SICLE programming models. Uh, these are the programming models that are uh, used by the AMD and Intel GPUs. So if you code in HIP, uh, HIP uh, or SICLE, you will be able to run on AMD and Intel devices uh, respectively, while both of these can also be run on the NVIDIA GPUs that are available at NERSC. Uh, so once you have decided what programming model that you want to go with, uh, then we have the recommendation of the programming environment that you want to use. I'm guessing a lot of the applications are already there where you have already decided the type of programming model that you want to use. So uh, everything uh, is all, uh, like most of the things are supported by the NVIDIA programming environment. Uh, while CUDA and COCOS, uh, we, can, we also recommend the GNU programming environment for them. Uh, so for CUDA, it, you typically want to go with the NVIDIA and GNU. Uh, with the COCOS, NVIDIA and GNU would also work. Uh, with the for the open ACC and the standard uh, C++ library parallelism, you would want to go with the NVIDIA compilers. Uh, with this, uh, let's move on to the hands-on exercises. There are a few concepts that are covered there uh, that uh, I want to walk through before you start doing the hands-on uh, exercises. Uh, so the, the repo on this link contains two directories, uh, a GPU, uh, a directory for the GPU examples and another for the CPU examples. Here, I'll just go through the GPU examples. Uh, so once you move to the GPU directory, you'll see there is a readme file that is basically sort of a lab manual that you can walk through. It contains instructions on how to build and run and what, is, what would be the expected output. There are some optional exercises that you can try out as well. Um, so we try to touch uh, everything, you know, almost everything that's uh, that's very basic uh, for the GP nodes. For example, we try to touch the three programming models that you can use to run on uh, on the GPU. We'll try to build them using different programming uh, environments or compilers. Uh, in particular, we touch CUDA, OpenACC, and OpenMP. These examples are pretty simple. Uh, your codes may be more complicated. If that is the case, you can always re always reach out to us, and we can help you uh, with the more, more complicated uh, things. Uh, then we have the uh, uh, some mixed examples where you have the GPU kernels being called by the uh, from the MPI ranks. And in some cases you want to use separate compilation because not all the compilers are able to build everything. Uh, and then we have uh, last two examples are for the CUDA where and the GPU affinity CUDA where MPI uh, gives you the uh, gives you the power of communicating between two GPUs directly with the data from one GPU buffer can be transmitted uh, directly to a remote uh, GPU buffer. And then uh, just like the CPU affinity uh, that was uh, uh, that was covered by Eric, there is a GPU affinity because there is a 
uh, how you can uh, bind your ranks to GPUs to get the optimal performance. Uh, each uh, of the exercises uh, directories will contain a make file, a batch script, uh, the sbatch script, and uh, some source files. Uh, the make file contains the steps to build the example, and the, uh, the sbatch file contains uh, instructions to run uh, the, that code. Uh, you can uh, use the the sbatch file, uh, the sbatch script directly, or you can just you know get get like an an interactive node and just run the executable uh, the execution line over, line over there. Uh, so the the sbatch script for GPU nodes would look very similar to what you 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 have been using on Cori or what you will be using on on the Perlmutter CPU nodes. There are a few uh, changes that I'll point out. So one major thing would be the change of the, the number of CPUs per task. So on the CPU nodes, uh, nodes you have 256 logical CPUs, that is 128 uh, hard hardware cores. On the GPU nodes, we have half that number. We have 64 hardware cores and 128 uh, logical CPUs. Now for Slurm, one CPU is a one logical CPU, that is one hyperthread. So if you have, let's say in this example, eight, ranks in total, you have two nodes. So you have four ranks per node. That means uh, you will need to assign uh, 32 CPUs per rank out of the 128 in total. And uh, let's say that instead of four, you had 64 ranks per node, then you would uh, you would set uh, C2, uh, C equals to two. Then you would, because you want to have one core or two logical CPUs uh, mapped to one MPI rank. The other two things that you want to focus on when uh, running on the GPU nodes is the GPUs per per task. That is the number of GPUs that you have you want uh, uh, you want you want to have per task available, and uh, the the constraint should be set to GPU because otherwise you will not be requesting a GPU node in uh, you know specifically. And uh, for for the scope of this training, if you want to use the reservation that we have for you, set this reservation flag to PM underscore GPU underscore March 10. So this will uh, you know get you through the queue very quickly because we have some dedicated nodes available for this training. Uh, when you're uh, running or building or running on on the GPU. There can be some confusion. For example, if you have an OpenMP code and you are not sure if it's running on on GPU or on the CPU, there are some uh, uh, debug uh, environment variables that can be very helpful. For example, if you're working with the GNU compilers, setting this uh, variable will tell you uh, when a kernel is launched or when a data transfer takes place from CPU to GPU or vice versa. And similarly, working with the NVIDIA compilers, uh, you have more fine control over what you want to debug and what uh, events you want to be alerted about. So uh, make use of these variables. These can be very helpful because uh, sometimes you don't want to use the profiler directly because there is a larger overhead. You just want to run your executable. So this basically prints out all the information that you need uh, onto the console. Uh, with this, let's move to the ex exercise one. So exercise one would just be a simple, uh, a simple CUDA kernel. And uh, we will demonstrate it using two different types of files. So there is a CU file, there's a CPP file. If you have uh, the CUDA API calls within a .cu file, that's a trademark extension for the CUDA uh, files. Uh, and that will be detected by all the NVIDIA compilers. So if you have the NVCC, which is a CUDA compiler, it will obviously detect it. Uh, but even if you have the NVC++ compiler, uh, it will also detect without any specific flags being passed. But if you're using a different compiler, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, if, sorry, if you are using the different extension, that is the .cpp, and you want your NVIDIA compilers to pick up that it's a CUDA file, then you would want to uh, pass a specific flag for that. Uh, if you're using the NVC++, then it, that would be dash CUDA flag. Uh, in the example, in the exercise two, we show a separate compilation. Uh, the CUDA code in particular can only be built with the NVCC uh, compilers. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's specifically recommended, but I think the LLVM can also do that. But uh, it's recommended that you build it with the NVCC. Uh, it can get you the best performance. And uh, 
let's say you want to build your main application with a different compiler, let's say GNU compilers, then you would want to use the separate compilation. That is, you first build your kernels, you move the kernels to a separate file, you build it using the NVCC, uh, generate an object file, and then link that object file using the compiler wrappers of GNU or whatever the com parent compiler that you want to use in a later uh, uh, stage. In example three, we show how you can use MPI along with CUDA. And this one is a much simpler example where everything is located within a .cu uh, file. You can simply use uh, one of the uh, NVIDIA compilers, in particular NVC++, through the compiler wrapper. And it would just detect uh, what language it is because it's a .cu file, so it would be much simpler. But the interesting thing is that the, uh, the compiler wrapper will be able to link the required uh, libraries for the MPI as well. Uh, the, but the more realistic case would be that, that you have your CUDA kernels in a separate file, you have your MPI or the main host code on, on a separate file and you make calls to your CUDA kernels uh, to, uh, from that host file. And that can be done using, that can be built using a uh, using the, the separate compilation again and uh, you can use your choice of host compiler here, but make sure that you use the uh, the compiler wrappers because otherwise the required libraries will not be linked. Uh, so before we move on to the next uh, examples, which include the uh, something about uh, CPU and the GPU affinity, let's have a quick recap of uh, the how how to set the number of CPUs per task. Uh, Corey Haswell and Corey KNL, you are aware of. On the per meter CPU, as was described before, we have 128 physical cores, uh, while on the GPU nodes, we have half of that. And uh, if we want to uh, set uh, the, the dash C flag, that is the number of CPUs per task, this is a simple uh, formula that you can use. So you divide 64, which is the number of hardware cores that you have on the node, uh, the CPU hardware cores, and divide it by the task uh, number of MPI tasks per node. And uh, floor that, you know, round off uh, to, uh, you know, uh, round it down and then multiply it with uh, two. For example, if let's say if we had 64 tasks per node, uh, the thing inside the bracket would be one, you multiply that with two and that gives you two. So that is the two CPUs per task that you're setting it. Uh, with this, uh, so this is an example of, uh, so uh, uh, you, you already saw that in order to make sure that we are, we're getting the best out of our nodes, we want to uh, set the CPU bind flag to cores that will bind your tasks to cores. But there is another thing on the GPU node that is the GPU binding. So if you do not set a GPU binding, then all your ranks will have uh, access to all the GPUs, uh, but GPUs are, are mapped to particular NUMA nodes. So uh, NUMA node is, uh, is like a region, a physical region in, inside your node. It was very nicely described by Eric, so I'll, I'll not go into the details. But let's say that uh, so on your GPU uh, on your GPU node you have four NUMA nodes, and each NUMA node is uh, uh, tied to a particular GPU. Now let's say that you uh, you have a rank that is bind to NUMA node zero, and it tries to access a GPU that is located on NUMA node two, then they are physically far away, so there will be a, a penalty for that. So to avoid that sort of thing, we recommend GPU binding so that your GPUs are so that your GPUs are, you know, in space they are set closer to your MPI tasks, and that is what we are going to explore in this example. Uh, so in this example, we have two batch scripts. There is one is the regular one, and the other is the GPU binding one. Uh, so first, the the regular one will have have no GPU binding and you will you can see that your execution line would look something like this where we are just binding the MPI ranks to cores and we are not setting the GPU binding here and it will print out uh, each rank will print out all the GPUs that are visible to it and the GPU that is assigned to it in this case we are assigning GPUs in a round robin fashion so uh, let's have a look at this highlighted example of rank one which is bound uh, to core 16 now core 16 if you look at this um, uh, node map, you can see that the core 16 is located in NUMA node one. Now NUMA node one has the, the GPU with PCI address 82 uh, tied to it. So ideally we would want the rank on node uh, on, on core 16 to have access to this GPU. 
But if you look here, the, the core 16 rank uh, is, uh, has been mapped to the GPU uh, with PCI address 41, which is actually located in new, uh, Numa node uh, zero. Uh, so this is not ideal. And you can also see that it has, it can still see other GPUs as well. And any of those could have been assigned to it. It totally depends on how you map uh, program programmatically. But if you use the GPU bind flags, this is what the output would look like. If uh, in, in over here in this particular, I'm setting the GPU bind flag to closest. So it will map each rank to the GPU that is physically closest to it. And you can see that it, uh, in this run, the core 16 rank, which is named rank two now, uh, can only see one GPU and it is uh, the PC address 82 GPU. And you can see that it's located in Numa node one. Uh, and that is the same Numa node where the core 16 is located. So just setting this simple flag will, uh, you know, may give you some performance improvement because now your your uh, GPUs are physically closer to the uh, to the ranks. Uh, try this out. There are different settings that you can use. You can check more on the uh, SCADMD uh, website uh, and GPU bind equals to close assist one option. But you you can there are multiple options. You can even do the custom mapping of GPUs to ranks. Uh, the other uh, interesting feature is uh, of CUDA aware MPI. So with the unified virtual addressing uh, technology, which basically allows uh, the uh, the GPU device memory to appear as part of uh, you know same address space as of the CPU memory, uh, like as has been shown on the figure on the right, it allows us to uh, make a direct transfer of messages uh, from one GPU to, to the other. So basically, if you want to send some data from the buffer of GPU uh, from one GPU to a remote GPU, uh, that can be done directly and it will basically bypass all the communication, uh, like you know, going through the CPU memory. And that is the typical route that uh, uh, CUDA where MPI allows you, you know, much faster communication this way. Uh, CUDA, uh, the example six will demonstrate how to do that. Uh, uh, basically, uh, you just uh, use the GPU module that will already be loaded in your environment. Uh, you can just build your example uh, as you would, and then you can verify uh, that it's actually you know linking this particular GTL CUDA library by checking for the the list of libraries that have been linked in. This basically indicates that your code is going to make use of the CUDA where MPI capabilities. The example that we have uh, will uh, we have. Uh, two uh, ranks, uh, two remote ranks. Uh, one will send uh, some data to a remote GPU on the other rank, and the other rank will read and print it to the screen. So it basically shows, uh, you know, you can go through the code and see how that's done programmatically and uh, that it's actually being done uh, uh, in the example. Uh, the the last example has uh, two parts. So here we uh, describe uh, with, with a simple example describe how you can use and build for open ACC and open MP. These are other programming models. These are more portable in nature than uh, the CUDA uh, programming model, which is uh, uh, kind of very specific to NVIDIA. But if you plan on running on different architectures, uh, these are some programming models that you can look into. Uh, open MP has, I think, the, the widest, of, uh, widest support. Uh, yeah, so with this, uh, I think uh, we should move on to the, the hands-on uh, section. Uh, we will be around, and if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us. Uh, thank you very much.